Well, there are a lot of great things to talk about in the Seahawks game on Sunday, and a lot of them have already been talked about, Bob. That's big of you to say this, by the way, being a Cowboy fan. Well, okay, let's start right there. The Seahawks <laughs> completely kicked the crap out of the Cowboys. No ifs, answers. But it wasn't Dallas playing down to anything. It was Seattle playing Thank great. you for the respect. That's Thank a, you. That, that was a fact in that <clears> game. <throat> and, and, you know, one of the more surprising things about it, you were out there, you know, and, and I imagine there was a little bit of buzz when Russell Okung is out there and then all of a sudden yeah. you get the list and he's not going to play. And all of a sudden, you've got a guy who they acquired, what, maybe two weeks ago? Play a little bit with Chicago. Frank Omeo. How was that? Was that close? <laughs> Omeo. Omeo. Frankie O. Uh, to, who, who comes in. He's a veteran. He played a little bit for Chicago. Not particularly well, but, but he played for Chicago. Finds out he's going to start. He's going to step in and start against DeMarcus Ware. Right. And look, DeMarcus Ware made some plays in that game. But, but that was one of, the, that was one of the, the stories of the game was he was not a factor. And Frankie O deserves a lot of credit for that, I think. Yeah, he does. Because, well, he did have the week to prepare because Russell was not True. practicing. And you obviously were preparing for the reality that he might not play. But the fact that you, you didn't hear a lot from Ware. I mean, he was in on some plays, but it wasn't the, the, the jailbreak it was in, in Arizona that, the, that they kind of stymied him and they were able to get some things going, especially in the second half. You know, you don't hear his name, that makes you realize he's doing a good job. Because if you're hearing his name, it's it's probably not for a good reason. And I mean, even with them, him being around for a week practicing, I mean, dude, plugged in at left tackle mm -hmm. in that for his first game as a starter, obviously at Quest Field. Mm -hmm. I mean, dealing with that noise, they're a little bit easier for the offense, though. I mean. At, in every way, the Seahawks were impressive. And, and we kind of got a look at this last year, I thought. Uh, and I don't know if this is Tom Cable's style or it's because there are certain guys who can zone block better than others, which it might be. But they have been uncanny at bringing in offensive linemen that can play. Well, they can plug and play. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a huge two, difference. Two guys who were backups last year are now your starters, and Paul McQuiston and Breno Giacomini. I mean, we're, think about that. We didn't know who either one of them were, and we were making fun of the great Paul McQuiston, and we were yeah. talking about that. And now these guys are stalwarts on that line. They're guys that just plug and play, and maybe they go to another system, and they're not what they are here. But I think you hit it on the head with Cable and his system. It allows these guys to kind of flourish, and they really function well as a unit. There isn't that one star. It's just as a whole, they are getting it done and it was a, a drastic improvement from week one against the Cardinals where it was a sieve. Yeah. I mean, it was it was an onslaught. Oh, and, well, and then they, the Cardinals ended at the Patriots, so right. we feel a little bit better about that. But, uh, you know, the way Marshawn Lynch ran and was able to run in that game, Wilson, was he even sacked once? I think he was. Maybe, maybe one time? I mean... I don't uh, know total numbers, but I believe he was. That old line keeps playing like that? They're going to be fine, starting with Green Bay on Monday.